the nation's capital, the Conservative Caucus presents Conservative Roundtable, an in-depth look at today's most important issues. Welcome to Conservative Roundtable. I'm Howard Phillips, Chairman of the Conservative Caucus, the organization which sponsors these broadcasts. We're delighted to have as our guest for this broadcast the man who is the head of the Ron Paul for President campaign. Ken Snyder, who's been a good friend for many years, joined up with Ron Paul when he was the Libertarian presidential nominee in 1988. In fact, I've, if I'm correct, Kent, uh, you did your master's degree uh, in college on the career of Congressman Ron Paul. I did. And I know Congressman Paul has great confidence in you. Uh, I can say a lot more about you, but let's talk about Ron Paul. Sure, sure. Uh, Ron is the surprise of this campaign season. He was done a colossal favor when Rudy Giuliani totally misrepresented uh, Congressman Paul's position, viciously attacked him, and, uh, and played the demagogue. But what he, in fact, did was put Ron Paul in the spotlight, generating considerable support for Ron's consistent anti-war position, not just among those Republicans who think our intervention in Iraq was a big mistake, but among Democrats and independents as well. Right. Uh, how did that debate affect the Paul candidacy? Well, it put us into a whole other level, if you will, as you're describing. That was in South Carolina. And uh, uh, Mr. Giuliani did make those uh, disparaging comments about Dr. Paul. And really what it did is that it made the public stop for a minute. And what I mean by that is Dr. Paul's been talking about the anti-war message from a long, for a long time. But it made the public stop to say, really, what is being said here? What did Rudy Giuliani mean? But more importantly, what did Dr. Paul mean? What was he saying? What has he been saying? And it was just that moment in time that all of a sudden caused the public to stop and to say, wait a minute, what's happening? And of course, uh, it's an oversimplification to say that Ron Paul is anti-war. He's no more anti-war than was George Washington. Right. He just believes that under our Constitution, uh, the federal government should commit us to combat, to defend the territory and population of the United States of America, and not to meddle in the affairs of other countries. Well, you're exactly right. As Dr. Paul said as the run-up to the Iraq War, if the United States is going to attack Iraq and go into Iraq, we needed to have the U.S. Congress have a declaration of war. It needed to be debated. It needed to be voted on. And if the votes said yes, then the country as a whole needed to unify, fight the war, win it, get it over with as quickly as possible, and be done with it. But the protracted police actions, as he's been critical of since the, the Korean War, just isn't the right thing to do, nor does the Constitution allow it. Dr. Paul has been a member of Congress off and on since the 1970s. Uh, he lost one election, came right. back from that. He ran for the United States Senate, uh, I believe in 1984, right. lost the Republican primary to Phil Graham. Uh, Ron's campaign was run by my former top aide, John Schrote, who died recently. And I actively supported Ron in that year, as I did in 1988, when he sought the presidency on the uh, libertarian ticket. Uh, now, Ron is a Republican, and he represents a pretty Republican ticket uh, district. There are a number of Republicans who've tried to ostracize him. He's been excluded from debates in Iowa. A party leader in Michigan has said he should be totally ostracized. Folks at the Republican National Committee haven't done him any favors. Right. Should he not be elected president, and should he decide to seek re-election to Congress from his Texas district, the home state of George Bush, uh, how would his controversial candidacy be received by his home district voters? Well, so far, the indications we have is that they are very receptive to Dr. Paul, one, obviously being their congressman, but also being a presidential candidate. And I think the reason for that is that they're beginning to see to where here's the man that they've been voting for consistently for the last several years, who actually has a national platform to express the views that they themselves hold. And I think that's part of it. So back home in his district, uh, he's being well-received, and he's being encouraged and gets all sorts of compliments and 
expressions of support when he's out at the grocery store and around the, in the area. One of the things about Ron Paul is that he's a real person. Yes. Uh, there, there are no uh, false pretenses. There's no phony uh, uh, image projection. Uh, he, he's a real person. He's a, he's a citizen in Congress, and uh, uh, he, uh, he's not highfalutin in any way. And uh, I would imagine that uh, that is disarming to a great many people. Well, that's the thing that's partly charming about him, because people actually are picking that up. Uh, I travel with Dr. Paul quite a bit. We get comments from people in the audience, technicians in the studios, various people like that, and they typically will say exactly what you said. A lot of times they'll say, I don't agree with him on every single thing, but you know what? I can believe this guy. I like him. I can believe him. I understand why he's saying what he's saying. I trust him. Uh, and that goes a long way, especially when you consider Dr. Paul in relation to the other candidates in the presidential field, but politicians in general. So people like that, and they should. And um, if he were to be elected president, what policies would he implement, and how would he seek to implement them? Well, all you'd have to do is take a look at his voting record as a member of Congress and see the bills that he voted against, which is most of them, or the few that he's voted for. Look at his speeches, his interviews over time. When people ask me that question, I say, just if you understand what Dr. Paul has done in the U.S. Congress and what he's talked about, he would do the same thing, of course, within the confines of the executive power in, as president. So he's a known quantity. He's not going to change. When he talks about reducing or eliminating the income tax, he'll do everything he can as, as president to do it. When he talks about bringing troops home and not having troops all over the world as policemen, that's what he's going to do, and, and those sorts of things. So look at his congressional record. will give you a very strong hint as to what he would do as president. He's been a strong advocate of the gold standard. Right. He wrote a book with Lou Lehrman on mm -hmm. that topic some years ago. It was supported by uh, the, the former Senator Jesse Helms uh, on that topic. And uh, he has been a knowledgeable critic of the Federal Reserve System, which taxes the American people through inflation. Right. What would he do about the Fed? Well, he talks about that quite a bit. He realizes that you just can't all of a sudden turn the switch off and close the Fed down overnight. So he talks about, in a lot of things, whether it's the Federal Reserve or Social Security or Medicare or whatever, programs of transition. He typically simply says that he'd like to re-legalize legal tender and have competing currencies and let the marketplace, let people decide what they want to do. So a lot of these things uh, are not going to happen overnight. He realizes that, but that doesn't mean they shouldn't happen over time. And he comes up with a variety of different ideas, again, as transition plans. The, uh, the Constitution says uh, no person uh, may be deprived of life without due process of law. I'm one of those who believes that personhood begins at conception, and, th and th for that reason, uh, the federal government has a role in stopping abortion, whereas on many other issues, such as uh, sodomy laws, et cetera, it's a matter for the states to decide. Mm -hmm. But I think Ron has a different position. I think he has a state's rights view of the abortion issue. Could yeah. you tell us about his thinking there? Yeah, he is, first of all, he is very pro-life. I don't know of a person personally that I know of who is more pro-life than Dr. Paul is, especially as his experience as an OBGYN for 30-some years and delivering 4,000 babies. You're correct. He does believe that is a state's rights issue similar to murder. Uh, most murders are a state's rights issue, and he considers abortion to be, in fact, that. At the same time, he also has introduced legislation called We the People Act, which would then strip the federal courts from the addressing that question. So he realizes that you have the federal court problem trying to intervene and have Roe versus Wade. That bill, if passed, would negate Roe v. Wade, that decision, and leave the decisions back to the state courts as well as the state legislatures. And many of us believe that Roe v. Wade applies to Roe and Wade, but to nobody else because right. the Supreme Court has no legislative uh, authority. Well, how do you size up the field? Uh, we're told by the media that there's a, f a top tier and a uh -huh. bottom tier, <laughs> and supposedly the top tier includes uh, uh, John McCain, Rudy Giuliani, and uh, Mitt Romney, and theoretically uh, uh, Fred Thompson would become a member of the top tier. Before we go to a break, we, we have less than a minute, but um, 
how can Ron Paul break out of the lower tier and get into the top tier? Well, I contend that he's already breaking out. Uh, every online poll after all the major national debates, Dr. Paul won. Uh, the buzz around the internet in terms of every metric that you can think of, Dr. Paul was always on the top. Our money is coming in increasingly by the day. So a variety of different metrics out there, Dr. Paul is coming to right at the very top of the charts. So I think he's already doing it. We've got a long way to go, but he's already doing it and he's breaking up there quite quickly. We have to take a break. When we come back, I'm going to ask Ken Snyder the head honcho of the Ron Paul campaign for his predictions as to who's dropping out and who's dropping in. Stay with us. There are many conservative organizations, but the Conservative Caucus is unique in that our standard for evaluating public policy is the Constitution of the United States. Our goal is to advocate policies which conform to what the Constitution stipulates and to oppose those which undermine the Constitution. It's clear that the federal government has only those powers which are provided in the Constitution, which were initially delegated by the states to the federal government or which were subsequently added by amendment. If we adhered to that principle, your taxes would be lower and your liberties would be more secure. The Conservative Caucus, www.conservativeusa.org or 703-938-9626. Here's how you can become a citizen lobbyist and influence how your representatives vote. Write a letter to your congressmen and senators. Speak out on a call-in talk radio program. Write a letter to the editor of your local newspaper. And call the Conservative Caucus for more information at 703-938-9626. Welcome back. I'm Howard Phillips, chairman of the Conservative Caucus. Our guest for this edition of Conservative Roundtable is Kent Snyder, who's running the Ron Paul campaign. That's probably not a good statement because Ron Paul runs himself and doesn't really need uh, unusual degrees of management. Uh, in the Christian community, for decades, there's been talk of just war theory. And one would think that Christians concerned about some of the outrageous things uh, that uh, have happened under George Bush, preemptive war when we haven't been attacked, this sort of thing, would rally to Ron Paul's banner. Yet, we see people like Father Pavone, conservative Catholic leader, uh, supporting Fred Thompson. We see Richard Land of the Southern Baptist Convention uh, supporting Fred Thompson. We see uh, Pat Robertson embracing Rudy Giuliani uh, just yesterday when he showed up at Regent University. How is Ron doing with so-called Christian leaders? Well, the leaders he's not doing too well, but the rank and file of the Christian community, he's, he's getting more and more support. Why is he not doing better? Uh, with leaders of the Christian community? Well, I think the part of this is the subject we're talking about, and that's the war. Uh, Dr. Paul, as you know, as we've already talked about, is anti-war. Uh, Anti-this war. Anti-this war, right, as you accurately described. He certainly believes in the just war theory. In fact, at the last debate in New Hampshire, when he, all the candidates were asked, what is the most pressing moral question of our time? Dr. Paul stood up and said, it is the problem that we have now as a nation simply discarded the long traditional doctrine of the just war theory, that we have now embraced preemptive war. For the very first time in our nation's history, we have now said we will go to war preemptively. And placing civilians at risk, right. not just combatants. Right. Of course, that happened when Harry Truman uh, bombed the Japanese civilians right. uh, at the end of World War II something which was heavily applauded at the time, but which was totally unnecessary right. for us to uh, prevail in World War II. And uh, a, a grievous uh, smear. 
and, uh, and of course, General Sherman did that to the people of the South under President Lincoln. Right. Uh, homes were destroyed. Innocent civilians were massacred. Uh, so this isn't the first time it's happened, but there has always been a remnant that has uh, understood what's wrong about it. Okay, let's get back to hard politics. Uh -huh. uh, John McCain is probably going to drop out. S one or more of the second-tier candidates uh, may drop out for lack of funds or lack of coverage or lack of support. Who's going to drop in? Do you think Gingrich will get in? Uh, if so, what impact will he have on the race? What impact will Fred Thompson have on the race? Well, I do think, I agree, I think uh, the so-called top-tier candidates, John McCain, will be the first one to leave. Uh, it's clear that his support is dwindling by the day. Uh, for our perspective, the more candidates that get in the race, the better it is, because right now, even with Fred Thompson or Newt Gingrich, none of them have, hold the same views as Dr. Paul does when it comes to foreign policy. So they're going to simply dilute that part of the constituency. So from our perspective, the more the merrier. Although Gingrich uh, is uh, articulating a nuanced view <laughs> right. of what our policy in the Middle East should be. I heard Newt speak uh, at the American Enterprise Institute recently, and he was brilliant. He's probably the smartest guy on two legs. Right. And I found very little with which to disagree. But then I remembered that when he was Speaker of the House, there were things that he had promised to do which he didn't do. Right. Well, as Churchill said, a leopard doesn't change its spots. And, uh, you know, we, Newt Gingrich has a long history, and uh, I don't trust him to be any more like Dr. Paul than anyone else. I mean, he's very smart, and he's also smart enough to realize that the winds are changing and that he needs to change his message to even have a chance. Now, what about Mike Huckabee? Uh, Mike has uh, secured the support of a great many Christian leaders and activists. He's, a, he's been a Baptist minister. Uh, he uh, embraced, in a way, the theory of creation or the, the fact of creation, depending on your perspective. Uh, he's a very glib, articulate speaker. Mm -hmm. And some people say that he's going to go head-to-head -head with Romney on August 5th in the Iowa straw poll. Do you think Huckabee could break out and become a more significant figure in the race? I think he can, uh, uh, for the reasons that you've mentioned and, and a few others. But I, I think he does have that possibility. I haven't really tracked his numbers in terms of fundraising li lately, but he does have some qualities that I think in Iowa in particular would probably get him quite a bit of attention. If Ron Paul wins the Republican nomination, uh, under Texas law, he could simultaneously seek re-election in the House of Representatives. Right. Just as Lyndon Johnson uh, sought re-election to the Senate uh, when he was uh, JFK's running mate. Uh, were Ron Paul either as a presidential candidate, nominee, uh, or as a former presidential candidate, would he be able to be re-elected in his district given the hostility he's earned from President Bush and Bush's Texas cohorts? I think he can. I really do. I think he can. And the other interesting thing about the Dr. Paul as a Republican nominee, there are even political pundits today that are beginning to say this, that out of the current field and any of the possible candidates, Ron Paul is the one Republican who could beat Hillary Clinton in a general election. And when you really think about that, it's quite astounding to think about. But if that's true, and there are people now that are actually making that assessment, that if the Republicans want to win the White House this next time, they had better nominate Ron Paul. Some people say that uh, Dr. Paul has more support among Democrats and independents right. than he does among Republicans. Uh, there are many big states where one can pick either a Democrat or Republican ballot right. uh, in a primary. And uh, even if Dr. Paul uh, does not make the top three in New Hampshire or Iowa, conceivably, in such states, uh, he could do extremely well. Right. We're getting a lot of support from independent and Democratic voters, and uh, the situation is, is described is, as you described. So. Uh, if we can just get past the primary, though, that's one of the other reasons sure. that these pundits are saying that Dr. Paul's appeal across the political spectrum is so wide now 
what would it be like in a general election? Well, you need to get Democrats to vote in those Republican right. primaries. You know, and let me mention something else. In New Hampshire, uh, there is not only a uh, contest for the presidency, there's a contest for the vice presidency. This is a little-known fact. And uh, with a bit of organization, even if Dr. Paul were not to win the presidential nomination, with a little bit of organization, he could come in first uh, in the vice presidential race, which could benefit his presidential candidates uh, across the board. And that's one of the reasons, among many others, that New Hampshire is one of our top states. Yes. And um, how much money does Dr. Paul need to stay alive as a candidate? And how is he raising that money? Well, we're predicting that for us to really be a viable nationwide campaign, we're going to have to raise 30 to $40 million. Uh, most of our campaign is a cyber campaign, which most people probably know, but it's still going to take a lot of money. To, to be and that's a lot candidate. less than other candidates. I mean, that, right. that's pocket change for Mitt Romney. That's correct. But keep in mind that if you take a look at the other candidates' campaigns, you realize that they are just like bureaucrats. They spend it like there's no tomorrow. The, their overhead is tremendous. I get reports all the time from various people that I know of in the campaigns that talk about just how much money is wasted. It's like working for the federal government. So we're very careful about how we spend our money. These people spend money like there's no tomorrow. How do you raise your money? Most of our money is online, fortunately for us, and the response for, uh, from the public is very strong, and we're happy to, happy to do that. Uh, we don't even have yet an organized fundraising operation completely going the way we're going to have, uh, which I'm very excited about implementing within the next few weeks. Is direct mail a significant factor in your fundraising? No. Really? No. I know it's always been a big factor in his congressional campaigns. That's right, but uh, the times are changing. And right now, people are becoming much more comfortable doing business online. And um, uh, we're pleasantly surprised in terms of the percentage of money we get in through uh, our website is, uh, is well, it's, it's a lot. Well, that's very significant. And I know that uh, your top fundraiser is the former mayor of New York, Rudy Giuliani. Yes. <laughs> His attacks on Ron have been a big boost. It was a, it was a tremendous gift to us. Now, tell me what you think about another mayor of New York, uh, Michael Bloomberg. Do you think there's any sense to the possibility of his being a candidate? I think he probably will run, one, because he has the money to do it, and he probably figures, well, what else is there to do? Uh, when you have several billion dollars, I guess you have 19 that. Nineteen billion, yeah. according to Fortune magazine. I guess you have that luxury. Uh, if he runs as an independent, I think he'll be a media darling for a while. But uh, after a while, I think his luster will probably uh, fade. Does Ron uh, have any problem getting on uh, the Sunday morning talk shows? We haven't made it yet. Uh, he is getting more coverage and more invitations from national uh, uh, programs. In fact, uh, he's going to be doing a Today Show interview. So we're getting more of that. Uh, has Tim Russert uh, scheduled a time? No, we haven't heard from him yet. Okay. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back with some additional comments from Kent Snyder, the leader of the Ron Paul for President campaign. Stay with us. Since the presidency of George H.W. Bush, the father of the incumbent, we've heard a great deal of talk about something called the New World Order. This is something of which every American should be wary because what it means is the transfer of control over our tax dollars and the setting of policies which affect us from an electorally accountable Congress to international bureaucracies over which we have no real control. Work with the Conservative Caucus in defeating the goals of the New World Order and restoring accountable, limited constitutional government in America. The Conservative Caucus, www.conservativeusa.org or 703-938-9626. Here's how you can become a citizen lobbyist and influence how your representatives vote. Write a letter to your congressmen and senators. Speak out on a call-in talk radio program. Write a letter to the editor of your local newspaper and call the Conservative Caucus for more information at 703-938-9626. Welcome back. If you're interested in the kinds of issues we discuss on Conservative Roundtable, 
please check out our website, www.conservativeusa.org, or drop us a note at 450 Maple Avenue East, Vienna, Virginia, 22180. Or you can fax us at 703-281-4108 and ask for our executive producer, Art Harmon. Uh, it's been a privilege to have as our guest Kent Snyder, uh, who, if I may say so, had a lot to do with persuading Dr. Ron Paul to seek the presidency this year and who is overseeing the Paul campaign. Uh, how do we get in touch with the Paul campaign? The easiest way is simply to go on the web, which is the web address is ronpaul2008.com, or just put in Ron Paul in Google or any search engine, and the information will pop right up. In the time remaining, what would you tell our viewers? The main thing that I'd like to share is that the campaign is literally growing by the day. Uh, every time I go into the office, the phones are ringing, more emails are coming in, the fax machine is busy, online donations are, are increasing by the day, more requests from people around the country. We're obviously implementing the Internet as much as we can. I take a look at our meetup groups from around the country. Uh, we have about 18 or 19,000 members, 260-some cities around the country, several meetup groups in over, overseas. I think they're probably American citizens who are just trying to get involved. Uh, the number of YouTube subscribers that we have now is almost 18,000, which is more than all Republican presidential candidates combined, and we're getting close to where we're going to be have more subscribers than all presidential candidates combined. So a lot of different uh, metrics that I look at each day are all pointing up. Uh, plus, when I go and travel on the road with Dr. Paul recently in Kansas City, we had over 700 people show up at a rally. I mean, this was, this was a pleasant surprise for us. And Obama was there a few uh, weeks before, and he didn't have that many. We're out of time. Thank you so much Thanks. for joining us on Conservative Roundtable, and thank you for viewing the program.